So what I'm going, what we are going to talk about today is Azure Container Instance. Uh, well, but to start talking about that, we need to understand some specific topics. That's why I have this specific uh, agenda. Uh, we are going to talk about some terminologies, just to understand some differences. Then we are going to talk about container as a service. Uh, then how we can push, pull, or how we can start using Azure Container Instance and what is needed to use that service. And at the end, I have a, um, a small demo to show this. Uh, let me let me present this. Okay, so let's start uh, from terminology perspective. What is an image? So basically, an image is an immutable file of an application that con that contains all of our code. Pretty much is like a, like a package where you put all your code, all your files, everything in that specific um, image. Interesting part is that in that image, you can also add the dependencies, everything. You can put every libraries, everything. You can put that. Uh, at the end, the idea is that you can take this image and you can deploy this in whatever uh, container runtime. Uh, let's see, what is a container? A container is an isolated place where an application runs. So the different between image and container is that the image contains the code, all of our code, dependencies, libraries, files, everything. But the container is the application. Pretty much when you push an image and you put that in a container, in a container runtime, that's going to be a container, right? So when you are talking about of the final application, that's a container. Uh, so in a solid place where an application runs the image without affecting the rest of the system and without the system impacting the application. Containers virtualize the operating system and run anywhere. Uh, that's the idea. And when we are talking about containerization of applications, basically we are, in, we are packaging all of our, de our dependencies code and we are deploying that everywhere. However, uh, when I say that we can deploy everywhere, we have a dependency. The dependency is the container runtime. So you need to have a specific software that is able to run that. So for example, Docker, Docker engine, uh, you have to install this. I mean, there, there is, you can download a, a zip package, uh, the, 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 the install of the Docker. You need to install that in, in your VM, for example. Then you can create an image and then you, you download or you pull that image in Docker in, in Docker, and you will convert that in a container. Uh, I'm going to show this in a detail in a second. Uh, what is container as a service? Container as a service is just a cloud service that helps manage and deploy apps using container-based abstraction. Container-based ab abstraction is what I'm talking about. Pretty much have your application in a specific container. Uh, what is the difference, for example, deploying code and deploying container? When you deploy code, you are deploying all your files, and probably you are deploying your DLLs, for example, in .NET. You are packaging everything, but you depend on your own uh, operating system. But for example, when you go to container, you need to specify what is the your operating system, what are your, and and you are going to package all your code. We are going to see that in a moment. The uh, container Walter. registry is where we store the images. Sure, oh, Geoffrey. Yeah, uh, uh, I have this question. Sure. Um, on, on, on the description, what is an image? Uh, um, uh, you can see system libraries, okay? Uh -huh. And in the description of uh, the container, um, it mentions that it virtualized the operating system. So my understanding in this moment is that the, the container is a kind of I don't know, uh, Windows Server uh, 2000, whatever. Um, just yes. just when you finish installing the operating system with nothing else. Uh, uh, exactly. On top of, okay. So in in this case, uh, is it it is is it possible that 
the system libraries that are part of this um, operating system on, on the container uh, could have uh, some kind of uh, collision uh, or or, or no. things with the system libraries that add uh, inner the image that could happen? No, no, but, but uh, yes, no, it, it's not going to happen, but let me go step by step. So uh, first, what you are saying related to if I can put on a specific operating system in my image, that, that's true. Uh, basically, for example, we can install or we can put as a base image, actually, that I'm going to show in a second. We can use, we need to specify what is our base image. Our base image can be Ubuntu. Ubuntu, there are many versions, for example, Ubuntu, uh, Alpine, Ubuntu, what is the other one? There are many ma names that we can use in Ubuntu. Yeah, different flavors. Also for Windows, exactly. But, and also in Windows, in Windows, um, also, well, there is something interesting. Let me do fast search here because the, the question is interesting. So let me go here. Uh, images, uh, Docker, uh, Windows, because this can help us to understand. So we can have these kind of base images. So when we go to these images, let me do something. Okay, when we can, when you go here and we start seeing images, there are some images that we can use. For example, uh, look at this. Uh, we can use Windows Nano Server, Windows Server Core, whatever Windows that you need. What is the idea? So we have all these kind of options is because you can select what is the image that you want with the specific dependencies. For example, okay. Windows Nano Server is a server, you can say light server. When you go to Windows Server Core, you are going to have Windows Server with core based images, those kind of things. But also, if you don't need Windows, but you need directly .NET because your application is in .NET, you can you can have a specific image for that. Let me show you that. Uh, let me go here. And, and, so, and those images, those images would work as a kind of template in which I add all my application stuff, and after that I create a new version, uh, a new image, exactly. all the stuff together. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so basically this is called layers. So basically when we go to the Docker file that we are going to do in a moment, you are going to see that we are going to run some commands and we have to download a specific image. Then we can put all of our code and at the end we are going to create another image. So basically uh, okay. this is how Docker works. You can oh, add okay. extra images or extra layers to each image. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. This is the, the second part is, are these going to be a conflict uh, with the current operating system of my VM or whatever I'm running Docker, for example? No, because this is isolated. So pretty much your operating system is going to have all the libraries that, that you need to, to run your, your VM. But the Docker, is like, uh, let me show you this. Uh, containerization on container. Yeah, uh, versus virtualization. Mm. Okay, let me let me show you. Uh, well, this is. Similar. Let me go. Let me let me see. Ah, videos now. Images. Okay. Uh, this one. So pretty much, this is what we have in container. This is what we have in our normal VM or PC or whatever. Basically, in our in in our PC, we have our infrastructure, memory, CPU, our PC. Uh, to be able to create many VMs or, or using our own VM, uh, we need to have an hyper, a hypervisor. And on top of that, we can we are able to create different operating systems. This is, for example, we, we use, what is the name? Uh, virtualization tools. Let me... VMware. 
Exactly. No, that's good. Exactly. When we use Beamware, basically we have our PC, we have Beamware, and we can create a lot of operators, operating systems uh, within Beamware. The, what we are doing there, basically we have one space, different, different, different operating systems in Beamware, but also we are sharing the same uh, the same uh, hypervisor and the same infrastructure. When we go to container, container applications that we have is infrastructure, our PC, everything is going to run in, in, in an operating system. That, that's fine. So uh, our Windows, our Linux, this is our, our VM. Uh, on top of that, we have our container engine. This is a dependency. Like here is a hypervisor, for example, Beware. Here is a Docker, for example. This is our container engine. Mm -hmm. And on top of this, you are going to have these applications with its own operating system and whatever. Everything is isolated. So this is <coughs> this is our operating system in our infrastructure. And every application is, is isolated from this one. Uh, this is not going to collide, no, nothing like that. So we should be fine. At the end, this is the structure that we are having when we have containers. Uh, the disadvantage here, for example, is that, for example, in hypervisor, we are able to create different the different operating systems. But here in operating, but here in container, we are we're using the same operating system. And basically on top of that, we are running Docker. The good part there is that when we have an image, we can specify what is the image that we need of the of the live operating system of each application. I will go this in a moment, but pretty much to answer your question, uh, operating system libraries uh, is not going to collide with uh, specific libraries of the applications. Okay. Um, yes, that's, uh, that's awesome. It. Uh, okay. And and I I realized I I I've been thinking for so for for a long time that containers uh, was a, a a synonymous uh, to virtual machines uh, and, and oh. uh, was kind of virtual machines uh, being hmm. executed being run uh, from the cloud from any given cloud. Okay, I, I I wasn't aware of this substantial difference. Yes, okay. exactly. Thank, thank you, exactly. Walter. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yes, just as a tip, so industry move to containers or are using containers is because it's light. So pretty much you can have your own, own operating system here, but it's, it's light. So you can, it's not a big file like this one. So if you want to have a big operating system in Bingware, it's going to consume a lot of, um, a lot of, resources, your memory is shared, your CPU is shared. In this one, it's also shared, but it's not too much like like you have in virtual machine. So yeah, because because you at the end of the day you you have a single instance of the operating system uh, uh -huh. with all of the libraries and all the stuff uh, related to 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 it instead of replicating over and over again as with traditional virtual machines. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, so Container as a service uh, is a cloud service. Is cloud services um, basically that provides the ability to do this. So, meaning, for example, Kubernetes is one ex an, an example. So, pretty much we can deploy our containers there. Azure Container Instance, that is the one that I'm going to show today, is another example. We can deploy our containers there. App Services also is an example. App Services when you use container. Uh, is an example. So those all services are examples of container as a service. Uh, container registry is where we store the, the images. So what is the difference between code and image uh, for container registry is that today when we do code, we need to push our code to our Azure DevOps repository. And when we create an image, our code, needs to go to Azure DevOps because we need our source files resides uh, in any place, in this case, Azure DevOps. But the image that we want to deploy, because at the end we need to create this executable, we can think like image, like our executable, we need to, 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 to push this in a specific repository. In this case, the container, a container registry. I'm going to show this in a moment. Oh. So, 
What are the advantages of disadvantages? So advantages are portability. So pretty much when you create your image, you are putting all your dependencies in that image and that's it. You just need to push that in your container registry and that's it. Difference with, with code is that you have your code, you push that in your Azure DevOps, but it depends if, for example, if you are going to deploy this to your own VM, uh, you are going to be affected for the dependencies of your VM. So you are not going to be sure if the problem is in your code, any dependency in your code, or is a dependency on your on your VM or your PC. Uh, that's why portability is an advantage. Consistency, also an advantage because when you push an image in the container registry, uh, whatever container as a service can take the image from that container registry and deploy that. That's it. Is the same image that is going to be deployed in all these kind of resources, AKS, container instance, uh, app service, whatever. Uh, scalability, because you can create many containers are required. This is, for example, in, in Kubernetes, you can create many pods. Pods is like the instance of an application. So pretty much you can uh, do a scalability. You can create many pods as you want. So that's why scalability is an, also an advantage. Uh, disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage are related to infrastructure uh, and also security. One is, for example, the security is because if you don't create correctly the Docker image, uh, when you create the Docker image, the default permission is root permission. Uh, and if you push that the image in your Kubernetes, if someone is able to do whatever code and, access, and, and try to access the, the root, it will have access to, to your host. And that is, that's an issue. So that's one specific part in the Docker file. So measuring your Docker file, you, you add the, the user and the specific uh, permissions that you want for that specific image. Uh, if no, you are going to have issues. Uh, networking, uh, networking and infrastructure pretty much because you are going to create more resources. So we are talking about the container registry. That is another resource. Uh, we are talking about how are we going to connect the container registry and the container instance or, or the container as a service. We need some kind of authentication. We need to do some kind of networking, enable this connectivity. That is infrastructure part. That's if we don't configure this correctly, that's a security issue. Uh, I need more infrastructure. This, this is more work for, for, um, for DevOps teams. Uh, an extra part, for example, in, in our client Deloitte, for example, when we, when we go to ima with images, we need to do uh, an scan of the image. In this case, when we go with, with normal code, when we do the normal scan for code, uh, we have the vulnerabilities for our code. We can run Fortify, uh, we can run White Source, and we are going to have some vulnerabilities, some libraries, but that's only for our code. When we go with images, we need to still doing that, that is static code analysis, but also we need to do the container image analysis. It's going to analyze what is the base image that you are using, what are the vulnerabilities of the operating system that you are using. So when you go to, to image, you need to think all of those kind of things. Uh, pretty much the infrastructure, the operation, the security. It does not mean that, that you should not do it. What I'm saying is that when you move to image, you need to think all of this just to make sure that you are doing the, the, the correct thing. Uh, any any question related to this? No. Okay. So uh, this is the example. This is the demo that we are going to do today. Pretty much, I as a developer, I will have a Docker file. I'm going to have all my code files. I I'm going to do a build to create an image, and I'm going to push that image to our container registry. Azure Container Registry. 
That's the first part. Pretty much moving our code image to the container registry, our repository of images. Then I'm going to pull that image from the container registry. I'm going to put that in an Azure container instance. Uh, and we are going to run our code. That's pretty much the demo I'm going to do today. Uh, and that's the, the final part. Let me show you the, the code. It's a simple code. I'm going to run this. Uh, let me run. You can see what is this. So I have Swagger in this one. Uh, this is just going to to give us a list of countries uh, here, Antarctica, Algeria, Andorra. So that's the idea of this application. And as you can see, I have two libraries, Countries API and Caching Store. This is just for caching something. And, but the important part here, because this is the, the main part. From development perspective, when you want to create an image of your code, you need to create this, the Docker file. And when you are using Docker as a runtime. So this is the, the Docker file. Pretty much it has some structure. I know you are going to have a separate session to explain Docker. I'm going just going to, to talk about some specific important parts. I'm not going to go to the detail. But the first part is this one. With the command from, you need to specify the base image. This is what I was that I was talking with Geoffrey. Uh, pretty much, you need to have an, a base image where you are going to build everything. You can use an, an operating system like Windows, Linux, as you want. But also, you can use the specific uh, the specific component or the specific image that you want. Let me go to this one, SDK. This is SDK7, this is .NET. My code is .NET. That's why I'm using this specific image. When I go to that one, when I go to that one, uh, let me let me see if I can find that one. Let me see Docker Hub. You are going to have other session about Docker Hub. So. I'm not going to explain too much about this, but just to summarize, this is our, the repository of Docker where you are going to have all the images that you want and Microsoft push all the images here. Let me go Docker, let me dot, dot net. Uh, and Docker official. Let me go Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, okay, trusted, verify publisher, okay. Let me go Microsoft, and now let me see up here. Uh, Microsoft. Microsoft.net. Uh, let me see is this one, no, not this one. Okay, give me a second. Okay, that's not by Microsoft. So, uh, pretty much Microsoft exposed these kind of images. Uh, so you can go to the Hub, you can verify if this is an official image, that is the suggestion. And also they expose all of these kind different of images. Let me go to .NET SDK. Uh, the, here, for example, if you need the seven, the version seven of .NET, you can use this image. If you need the version six of, of .NET, use this other image. Uh, but also I wanted to show you that the Docker file, let's see, for example, this one, Docker file. Okay, so for example, this, uh, as you can see, uh, this is the forum. The from this is the, taking this wool, warm, slim, but at the end they are, they, they are taking this as a base image. But when they run all of these, they are creating this image .NET ASP, and at the end those are the image that, that we are using. 
So in our case, as we are using this SDK 7, Microsoft did something like this. From whatever Ubuntu or Windows image, they install all the dependencies for .NET, and then they push, they publish this specific image, the, the, the SDK 7. And that's the one that we are, we are using, that we are putting here. So what you need to know is that behind of whatever image that you use, probably there are more many images behind of that. The operating system, probably some installations of dependencies and everything. So that's something that you need to know. In our case, because we are because we have .NET code, we are using directly .NET SDK 7 because all the dependencies are here. Something interesting also that you need to know is that is that as, as I'm doing build, I'm using SDK, but when I'm publishing or, or when I'm going to push this image to my container, I'm using only SP, SPNet. So pretty much I'm just having SDK with all the dependencies to build my .NET application just for the build, but for to push to push this to my container yes, registry and not to have big size on my files, I'm using SPNet. So that's something that we need to, to take care of also in Docker files. You can do these kind of things, one for uh, for build and the other one for to push. And, and inside of this, basically I'm doing whatever, whatever we do when we build and, and release a .NET application, I'm doing the same here in Docker file. So, Pretty much, uh, I'm doing .NET restore to restore this application. This is this is this actually click dot cliff uh, rebuild. Uh, oh yes, uh, restore. Oh, okay, yes, rebuild is going to restore too. Okay, and then .NET publish. This is our .NET publish when we do the, the publish. So pretty much, what I'm doing is just adding the commands in the commands to run this specific code. And then I'm having this other image and I'm taking from build, build, this is, is this other image from build, take only what is in out and put that in this specific image that I'm creating. Because I don't need all the dependencies that I created here. I just need this folder my D DDLs, that's it. That's why I'm doing this. From this build, pointing get all out to this specific image. Then I'm creating this specific variable, environment variable. This is how we can create that. And then I'm telling Dockerfile what is the, the entry point. As soon as this is deployed, as soon as the image is deployed to a container, what is the, the command that needs to be run? In this case, .NET, and this DLL, that's it. Uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to show you now uh, this part. This is the Docker file. Now what we're going to do is build the image. And for that, let me go to the command line fastly. Uh, I already have the command, so you need to... Uh, meanwhile, let me... Let me show you this fastly. So I already have all the resources. Uh, all the resources is my container registry and my container instance, that's it. The container for the container registry uh, is going to be my repository. I already have a repository. Let me show you. This is going to be, if you don't have, this is empty. Our commands is going to create, but if the repository already exists, it's just going to reuse. The difference is here, what is the version of the application that you are going to deploy? So for this specific demo, I'm going to deploy the version two, but I'm going to reuse the same repository. But you are going to see as soon as finish the command, here, I, here, here we are going to see the, the application two. Uh, let me do that right now. So right now what I have done is I, I have moved my command line to the, to the root of this, uh, because I'm going to all the co I'm going to run all the commands there. Uh, my next command is the Docker build. This is the command to build 
our image. Uh, this is this is reading the Docker file, as you can see here in the parameters. I'm sending what is what is located in my Docker file. So it's reading all these steps, is getting the image. So from here we should see the from uh, from build run.net restore. Here we can see this command, the nine is this one, run.net store. And so here we can see what are, what is this doing. This is like a log that is helping us to understand what is this doing. Then right now is running the run.net push publish. Do you see here run.net publish the out? And that's it. Exporting to image, exporting layers, everything. So then uh, as this is finished, I can go to the Docker image. In the Docker image, I have more than one, I have a lot. But for this specific case, uh, the latest is this one. Okay, seems that we don't have any, any difference. Okay, as we don't have any difference, any significant difference in the code, it didn't identify any issue. Pretty much, this is how this is working. So yesterday I did this Docker build and I built this image. Meaning that all these layers were cached. As you can see here, cached, 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 cached. So as I run in this today again, but I didn't did any, I didn't do any change. It's taking the layers from the cache. That's why here, for example, when I'm going here, called peel of countries, the latest didn't change. 40, 43 hours ago, it didn't change. Uh, and that's fine because if our our code doesn't have any change, that's totally fine. Uh, if you do some changes, you can do Docker build, and you are going to see here the the latest modify it in what in which, in which time. And that's it. From our side, we are fine. Uh, we, we did the Docker file. Now let me log into the to my Docker to my container registry. Uh, this is the, authentic the authentication part that I'm talking about. Uh, accepted. Oh, Docker login. Ta -ta -ta. Okay, got it. I know what I did. Actually, I can do this. Let me go uh, here. This is the authentication part uh, because I'm going to push this image to my container registry, right? To this one. But to able to connect to this, I need some kind of authentication. So that is a that's a, a security layer, something to consider. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm connected. Login succeeded. Now I'm going to push. I'm going to change the tag. Uh, the tag is the version. I'm going to put uh, version two. I'm going to put, no, I'm going to put version one or the latest. Let me choose the latest, latest to, na to be named. Uh, I'm going to explain this in a second, to be named this one. So what I'm doing, Docker tag is a command that allow us to specify the attack for, for our image. The tag can be the version, version one, version two, version three, whatever. Usually is that. And this part is because we need to specify what is the container registry where we want to push our image. And basically we are doing like a copy. So pretty much right, we are taking code pill up countries latest, this one, code pill up countries latest. And we are creating like a, a copy of that one uh, to code pill AC Azure CRI. This is my ICR in, in Azure. And code pillar countries version two. This is the the version that that I'm going to to push. So this is going to create a an, a copy here in my local. Let me let me put this and let me go to Docker image so we can see the the difference better. So here is what is happening. So previously we just have it this. We just have it this, but we didn't have this. If I go back, we didn't have that one. Code pills two, but now we can see that. Code Azure CLI code pill up countries too. It's because I have created a copy, and what I'm going to do right now is to push this 
and this will be moved to here, or it's going to be copied here. That's the next step. Let me let me do that. Copy like that. Okay, copy uh, code Azure CRI uh, code pillar like countries too. That's it. Uh, as you can see, this is good. Layer already exists. It's good because it's taken from the cache, so identifies if there is any difference or something like that. No difference, so well, that's why it was fast. And now we can see our our new image here. But this image is the amount of layers that we have. So pretty much one every command that we're running this is going to be a layer. Layer, 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 layer. And this is what we are seeing here. Layer, 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 layer. And at the end, this is a, a SHA, a digest. Okay. So now all of our code is here. And now we should be able to, to use this image. That is, so we have done this, the build image and push. This is the part that we have done. Now that we're going to do is we're going to pull from our container registry to our container instance. Let me go to, and do that. This is our container instance. And here, uh, here we have this. I have already this running. If I go to properties, here we have what is the operating system that I'm using for this container instance. And here I can see what is the, oh, sorry, that's the definition of that. Properties, these are the properties. As you can see here, these are the properties of the instance that I'm using, that I'm using right now. Uh, so now that we want, to modi we want to modify that. So to modify this, we need to run some commands from Azure CLI, but, uh, but in this case, I'm going to do something different. Let me create a new instance with that. So you can see what is the process that that I follow to create this kind of container instance. So I search container instance. I'm going to select my my resource group. Uh, container instance, I'm going to put whatever name. Let me see I pull or I can know. I should pull uh, 2023, that's it. And let me put this here. Is available is US2, the region availability is only needed, SQE standard. I'm going to, to select that my image source is going to be Azure Container Registry. If you are getting that from other kind of registry, you can select other registry. For now, Azure Container Registry is the one that we are using. And as you can see here, it's automatically populating my registry, my image, because I only I only have one, so that's why in the resource group. But if I have multiple, I can select from here, the, the one that I want. And here, I, I can select the two. So now is determining the operating system that I'm using, and that's using Linux. That's that's really good. Uh, from container instance, we cannot select a specific, uh, a specific amount of instances. Um, that we can select is the amount of BCP and, and memory that we need because we are going to be charged for the per second. So pretty much when you run something in the container instance, you are going to be uh, charged per second. That's what you are going to pay per seconds. Uh, networking. So from networking, you can select private known. I'm going to select public, but this is other consideration when you go to container instance. Uh, the DNS uh, name, I'm going to put here this name. You are going to see this in a moment. This is pretty much the URL that we want to use for this container instance. I'm going to keep this at default, the port 80. Restart, you can keep this as a default. If you have environment variables, you can put the environments here. In in my case, I was using uh, ASP.NET uh, development, the one that I have here, ASP.NET Core environment. Uh, but as I'm using that in code, I'm not going to use anything here. So 
But if you want, you can you can use the the environment variables here. So that's totally fine. Uh, tags, review plus create, and create. This is, this does not take too much. Uh, actually, this this creation is is easy. Uh, meanwhile, let me show you update. I don't instance. This one. Uh, for example, if you need to change uh, an environment variable in your existing instance, you need to run commands. There is no way to modify that through the UI. You need to, to run these kind of commands just to update. That's, I don't like that, but that's how Microsoft is doing things. So <laughs> I cannot do more. <laughs> and okay, so now here, Okay, so now when you create a container instance, as it is public, you are going to have a public IP, meaning that we have access through internet to this, but also we are going to have the fully qualified do domain name. But it's because I configured this. Remember during the creation that I told you that I'm going to put this name here and I'm going to explain later, it's because this is our URL. ACI pool 2023. If you don't, if you if you left that empty, you are not going to have any any URL. You just are going to have the IP. Pretty much, you you will need to do some some DNS traffic. You need to to do that something like that. But in in my case, as I provided this, uh, let me let me work with that. Uh, oh, before doing we going there. When you want to see the containers, you need to go to, to this part, containers. And here you can see the history. So pretty much pulling, pull, and started. So the image started. So let me go there. Okay. Give them some some time uh we can see the properties as you can see here is our two the version two now this is saying okay probably is this an error is timeout let's see so uh, it's because i have swagger let's see what happened now now you can see the application is already pushed and uh, we can do we can execute we are having now our application in container instance. Uh, so pretty much that's it. Uh, as, as a final part, that's the demo. But something you can know is that we can deploy more than one container. Uh, but to deploy more than one container, you, you need something named container groups. And container groups, you can only deploy that through ARM templates or YAML files, uh, container groups. You cannot deploy that from UI as we just did it. You need to have something like container to, to item a template or something like that. And basically we should have this possibility. Right now that we were able to do was this part, basically deploy an application and that's it. But if you want to have more than one running, you can create container group through ARAM template and you can have more than one application running. Uh, for now, we just have one. And yes, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk. I don't know if you have questions or additional talks.
or doubt? Well, not from my side. Okay. So let me. If yes. that's what. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, for the presentation. My question is related uh, to scalability in this kind of containers. They, uh -huh. they This container has something like uh, in AKS, we have, you know, um, increase the number of, of pods when you have more traffic or something like that. No, the, the short answer is no. So pretty much your pod in this case will be the application. The, the difference with AKS is just that you can have more than one pod per application. This is not something that you can do here, uh, but pretty much here you cannot do that is because you are able to manage the capacity. Uh, I mean, let me let me show you. This one, what is your CPU core? What is the memory that you need? And, and that's it. Pretty much when you are running this application, they are going to ensure that you are using this, this capacity. As we are being charged per second, so pretty much they are trying to ensure that when you run this, you are going to have this specific capacity. Uh, so we don't have that scalability, but they are trying to make sure you have these specific requirements solved. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any any other question? So just just to add something, when you are thinking about if you want to use Azure Container Instance, use these when you have probably jobs. Uh, probably when you when you have a simple. Uh, like simple application or something like that, because if you have a big amount of 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 microservices, I will suggest to use or app services uh, using the container part or use Kubernetes. However, I have my restrictions with Kubernetes, but this is more for related to infrastructure perspective. There is a lot of things that we need to do there. And that's why I just if you need really, really AKS, I suggest that. If no, go with other kind of technology. But for container for container instance, go with jobs, something that you don't you are you don't need a lot of containers or a, or a lot of instance of applications. You don't you don't need scalability. For example, the question that Fabio did was really good. Because when you are thinking about the scalability or because you need to provide service to other applications, uh, for example, UI, a lot of microservices, probably you won't go with app services or other kind of technology, AKS is also a possibility, but not with container instance. Container instance is probably just to run jobs or because a vendor requires this and or is a simple API application and that's it, no more than that. This is not done for big applications or big microservices or something like that. Uh, I don't know. There is other question or something to share. Okay, so let me stop sharing. <laughs>